Hi everyone, and welcome to another Octagon video. Different to other videos, I'm actually starting uh, on my computer this time. This is going to be a video on solar panels. In terms of solar panels, there's a few considerations. Mono versus polycrystalline in terms of efficiency is the main criteria. I want to use a small solar panel for a number of different reasons, and I've settled down on this uh, Sunima uh, solar panel. It's a very small one, but very specifically because it's actually monocrystalline. I don't know if you could read that. But if we click on the hyperlink, we're going to go to Amazon, and this is what the actual uh, solar panel looks like. It's 50 by 50. It's actually quite small. And what we want to be able to do is uh, integrate these into a solar panel, uh, into a bigger solar panel. So if we look at uh, the dimensions of these things, I've kind of reverse engineered what they're going to look like design some clips to grab on every single one of these and combine it into a panel. When we're looking at the solar panel, just a quick little PowerPoint presentation before looking at uh, the actual solar panel itself. What we have here is the overall wiring. Obviously, when you design an electrical system, you have to have an end in mind. Uh, we want to charge a number of batteries, which are uh, 18650 batteries uh, as, uh, I'm going to say, high capacity lithium ion batteries. And that's pretty much uh, the best. I believe it's the batteries that are in the Tesla cars, if not exactly in that format, something similar. So obviously we want to charge a bunch of those batteries and then we want to be able to use them. I'll talk about the battery charger that we're going to use in a little bit. But overall, what we're looking at is this overall wiring. So we want to be able to produce six volts which requires us to put one, two, three of these panels in series, and that's done by connecting the positive to the negative all the way through. And then here we have one, two, three, four. And if we look at the previous spreadsheet, I've got all the details. Very low amperage, but we're effectively just putting all of these in parallel to basically jack up the amperage as much as we can. So then over here we have another one, one, two, three, and another one, two, three, four. So what we have overall is 16 of these things uh, running in parallel to bring the amperage from milliamps to basically somewhere around one amp so that we can charge. The design of the actual solar panel itself, the tray or the box that these solar cells are going to sit in, is actually going to be kind of independent. It's going to be insensitive to this to a certain extent, but overall I've chosen this design so that if you get shade over this one area, less things in series is basically better. And the solar charger that I have actually supports six volts. So we could step it up. Maybe time will, then experimentation will tell that this is better. But one of the reasons I've started off in the presentation mode is that uh, I'd actually have not purchased these solar cells yet. So that's going to be coming in a future video. But I did want to basically give a picture in terms of what these things look like and basically how we're going to wire these things because what I will show you in the video of everything that's been 3D printed, we're basically trying to accommodate this specific design. So if you look in general, the panels are going to be square, 4x4, four four, so that's one of them. These two here, or in the middle here, that's another 4x4, four four, and this is another 4x4, four four, which is what's required to do two things. Number one, something that's rectangular, that's still a factor of three. And then to be able to do that, I basically have these hinges that come through. You'll see that on the physical video. And then, you know, we need to make accommodation for all of the wiring. So again, the wiring and the assembling of this thing is going to be part of a different video, but we have here the solar cell and the wiring of the solar cells. So I'm going to get out of the slideshow. Let me go back to the presentation very quickly. And if we look at the actual solar charger, we're going to have a device. I've selected the WaveShare device, the Solar Power Manager C. They have a Solar Power Manager, which has room for one, I think it's a double A size battery. And then we have the Solar Power Manager B, which has a LiPo battery, which is a battery pack. And then we have the Power Manager C, which actually has space inside here for three 1865 batteries. So here we are. So we need everything that I'm going to be showing you in terms of solar panels in order to power this guy. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get these three batteries to charge within a day. The goal is to charge two of these in a day. One of them hopefully will run 12 hours over the course of the night, and then the other one will obviously run 12 hours during the day. So ideally, you're going to be charging from first thing in the morning to noon, and then noon to the end of the day, or daylight hours. And... 
if we only get three batteries out of these guys, it's obviously that most of the applications are gonna work with more than three batteries if we want 24 hours of power. So then we're just gonna to have to scale up. We're just gonna to have to add a whole bunch of these things. So effectively right now we have the physical components that we have to 3D print around. I have not purchased this device either, but we're gonna see what overall this looks like. So without further ado, I'm going to end the computer portion of this video and move to the physical components. Okay, so as per the preamble, on my computer here we have the actual solar panels. So this is one third of the overall deal and if we look at the actual presentation, it actually showed you know, a hinge on this side and a hinge on this side, which I will review. Here we have the individual clips that will grab on each of the cells. And relative to my finger, you can kind of see the, the size of these things. They're pretty small. And I've only got four of these printed out because until I get the actual final cell, there's no point in printing a whole bunch of these things. But yeah, that's what we have overall. So I'm going to go through this mechanism and kind of explain how the whole thing works. So the first thing would be to take this thing apart. I tried printing this all in one piece. We're gonna go to the graveyard or the scrap yard afterwards. But in general, what we have is something that's 20 by 20. And when I tried to print it, there was too much bowing. So I had actually had to divide it up into segments. So the idea now is I pull these little guys out, which we're gonna see a lot of as I go through this video. And if I move those over, we can see that the actual little clips uh, pop out. I'm going to grab this one because I think this is the only one that's whole. Again, we're going to have to do another tour of the scrapyard to kind of explain what's going on. So what we have now is a clip, kind of inspired to a certain extent by a cell phone protector. Went online, looked at the 50 by 50, assumed what the corner diameter is, and I'm hoping that we're going to be able to grab on to either side of the clips by basically bending this backwards and grabbing onto the corners. So if the, I believe this diameter is five millimeters. So, and hopefully that gives us enough to poke out and grab onto it. I may have to make it a little bit taller so that the, the solar cells don't uh, hit each other. But overall, I think that this is pretty workable. So we got these little legs that allow us to slide in. And then we have these little cutouts here for the actual cables. So the idea is once this clips in, I'm hoping that this will form a reasonably watertight seal that then the water, if it does wrap around the solar cell, will come in here and run off. And obviously your leads will be inside this box. Worst case scenario, we can glue these things to create this watertight seal. But the whole idea of this is to bypass any fancy box or I've seen in some videos grabbing the solar cells and dipping them or putting them in epoxy resin. That seemed to be too complicated for me. So the monocrystalline cells that I have have been bathed in, uh, in resin. And basically here we have, uh, here we go. So if we start small with this format and these little clips, we can basically control the size of our solar panels, which in general, I believe will have to be big. And I think that we're on the right track, but time will tell as we build these things and basically charge some batteries and see how we see how we go. But if you see these uh, bow ties, as I like to call them, because that's the shape, they're actually, it's a stopper. And I'm using this to confine these things in this specific axis. So as we slide these things in, basically we are stopping these things from moving around. So if you look in here, the wires are going to come out and they're going to be connected to each other as shown in the diagram. And we have to come over top of these things, uh, which is fine. And then obviously we have to go across the individual hinges. So with that said, I will actually introduce the hinge. I'm just moving this over. This is the, an example of one hinge and kind of almost looks like a battery, but it isn't. This is a print in place hinge that will allow the cables to kind of go from this segment on to the next one. And if I look at that and I turn it over, you can see where. So the cables are gonna wrap around the back. And then if I come around here, you can see a very small opening. I'll show the bottom one there so that we can run these things from one cable tray to the other. I'm hoping these are big enough, but I could always cut these out and smash them wider. So once again, if I put all of this together now, I'm going to grab a couple of these guys and take them out. And you can see that I've actually lost a few legs along the way. We'll talk about that a bit later on. But overall, the main important part is that I slide this hinge in here.
and it confines this guy. And I've only got enough for one row of these. If we grab this whole thing, one row across. So ideally it's gonna be four by four, it's gonna be four by four, and it's gonna be four by four. But I'm just gonna show it, you know, one, two, one, two, and one, two, because I don't have enough things printed out across the board. So to do that, I gotta disassemble uh, this guy over here. So I'm gonna pull that guy out and hopefully be able to pull this guy out. But before I do that, I wanna show this. So what I'm doing now is running, and I'll have to do this with the hinges as well. So I'm running this full length, halfway across, one and the other. And then I'm introducing these little small jobbies, which are half the distance at the beginning and at the end. So if you look overall, this is kind of the, the dimensions and that's how we expand that way. We basically just do a bit of a, of a staircase. So obviously with this hinge, I'll have to print a half version of it so that when it's centered over here, we're gonna have a top piece uh, and a bit of a bottom piece. But continuing on with the disassemble of the one big panel, I pull out the little pieces. So what I have right now is this, okay, and I guess just to get rid of the finalize the scrapyard, this is my attempt to do a full 20 by 20 one of these in one shot. And what we can see here is we got a tremendous amount of bowling, despite me using a, um, a raft. So basically, you know, this is printed on another couple of millimeters worth of stuff. Would have been cool if I could print it all in one, but I can't. And very specifically, this mechanism here on the side, it got completely compressed. Because if you look at it, we are doing a little key slot or a little angle slot for our bow tie connectors. So effectively, this piece here was the original design. And basically, we moved to something that's smaller and more modular. So we can say goodbye to this guy. And once again, doing a video so I can throw this guy out. Um, but in terms of the big piece, the first time that I actually did the key slot, I did it uh, once again a lot smaller. So sat there and did it that way and actually printed a hinge to go along with it, but there was no bite. So if I try to insert that in here, I'm going to see that it's actually going to slide out completely or it's going to just going to pop out if I can even slide it in. The first cut time it slid in and then, you know, I just applied a little bit of strength and it popped out. So now you can see I can't even really get it to slide in. So, you know, version 0 0.1 or version 1 of this mechanism sucks. So when I looked at making this bigger, I really didn't want to until it occurred to me that these individual sliders needed confinement in their tray. And if I can get the bow ties to act as the confinement, as well as that, then it's worth, you know, the bow tie complication that we currently have. So once again, to finish off the scrapyard, this part of the, we can see how much we've gone from how deep it is. So again, this is not calculated to maximize the grip. It goes in enough to actually provide confinement. So when we put these things together now, if I slide this in, I get a little bit of rigidity in that the in that this kind of does act as a bit of a whole panel and I'm reasonably happy with that. So obviously here, you know, we're doing a, a much better job at um, getting a bite. So reasonably happy with that and let's move on. So now that gets rid of the actual scrapyard for this guy. Bye bye. And obviously this guy, which is the prototype. And just to continue with the scrapyard, I want to elaborate a little bit on the hinge, um, which is this guy over here. So this is actually printed on the bed exactly as it is. And I actually tried a version where, which is this guy here, which uh, fell apart in a million pieces. So I actually printed it standing up. 
So I've done a lot of print and place hinges primarily for the glove. And I've had, you know, some success with smaller pieces actually printing things this way. Uh, when I did this at this scale, um, you know, there's little pieces of support that actually came in here. And that was enough to jam the whole thing up and I couldn't get it to be free uh, without uh, breaking it. And for whatever reason, and you could see the defect even in this line because there's uh, support in here. I don't know why my printer does that. This line here was actually fused with the thing next door to it, which I don't think it should have been. Um, but anyways, uh, kind of the same thing has happened here that caused uh, these pieces here to break. So on this side, you can really see this line over here. And for whatever reason, these were printed with this at a 90 degree and they were fused right along the line over here. So yeah, so once again, this is the second attempt. You know, I did the, uh, the first one was printed flat and the second one I did standing up with the bigger key slots. And funnily enough, I can insert it through here. Anyways, this actually does work when I get it in, but the end pieces here, you know, they just, they just fall out all the time. So anyways, another tour of the scrapyard more things that I can actually scrap. And once again, I have all my little feet that, that broke off. If we look at why that is, I printed one of these guys with tree support. And if you look at the difference between this guy in the foreground, here you can see some severe markings relative to these guys over here. And that has to do with, this is just normal support and this is tree support. And this introduces so much friction that I actually broke uh, some of the feet off. Once you get it in, you slide it back and forth. You know, I've cleared these guys up. But let's just say adventures in 3D printing. So if we turn around now, I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to turn it around. And you'll understand why a little bit later on. So once again, this friction, it's not nice necessarily, but to a certain extent it actually acts as your friend. So in the worst case scenario, what I need to do is just... using a screwdriver to basically hammer it in. And then on the end piece over here, I'm gonna take this guy out. I'm gonna move this guy in. And what we have overall now, pull this thing out a little bit, is I have something that it folds over completely across this way. Okay. So imagine that would be a whole second row deep when we finally go down and then we have the cells touching each other so when i was talking about making the little legs a little longer that would be so the two cells don't smash against each other and scratch so that might require again a, a change in the cell clips themselves i'm gonna have to make more adjustments because this piece here is going to become important um, if we look at on the back of this guy, I've actually got a little clip going on. But before that, I want to introduce uh, the fatter um, hinge, which is this guy over here. So if I look at how wide this is, you know, I've thought about trying to get a <laughs> another solar cell in there, but I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, cable management is important enough for. I'm just going to leave it like this for the for the first uh, for the first version. So to get this to work uh, completely, I'm going to basically replace this guy here with this guy here and then do the final assembly so that we have both of our hinges working together if we come back look at the whole thing here we can fold this guy in this way and if we come back over here and insert this guy in here. The multi clips. Okay. And then at the end over here, I put in this clip. And now we have the overall final product which actually closes this way. So what we have here is a sandwich. So 
At the bottom of this is going to be the solar charger, which is a little box. And if we imagine the little clips that actually run down over here, we're going to have a mirror set of these on the other side. And then the box is just going to slide in underneath over here. I'm going to show you what the box looks like in terms of CAD files. I've got it all CADed up just to kind of complete the, the overall thought. But these clips serve for that purpose and also for another purpose in that when we fold this guy out. Okay, and here we have it. Okay, so that's the whole width of this thing. And again, we have um, 4, 8, 12 wide by 8. And theoretically, we can keep going this by staggering these things as I showed a little bit earlier on in the video. But we obviously don't want it sitting on the ground that way, so we want to have little legs. So in comes this piece over here, which I will now show how that fits. So I'm going to fold this guy back up again. So we've got this guy coming over top, right, the thicker hinge, so that we can actually wrap it around. And now we've got something... You know, this is wider than 20 by 20. It's actually uh, 240 by 240. This is 20 or 2 centimeters, and that's 2 centimeters. But that's okay. And if we flip this around, we're going to see that we actually have a bit of a spacer. So the idea with this guy is that this guy over here is that we slide it in between these two legs and underneath this guy. And that's the way this guy is going to be stored. And then what we have is a print in place hinge where this leg can actually stand up. So the box is actually three centimeters. This overall is five. This is eight by eight. It's probably too rinky dink, which makes the hinge over here four by four. Um, and it's inner workings even smaller. Again, print in place hinge. But the idea is when we fold this guy out, okay, we want to be able to extend uh, this guy and it actually has a stopper here so that it actually goes beyond this hinge and then we come out this way so now the final product when it's all unfolded we're gonna have four of these legs right and we're gonna have this thing here sitting on its individual leg now obviously we're still getting some flopping which is the reason why we have this flat piece sitting on the other side but just by introducing another little clip and confinement I can actually get this to, to sit flat so if I basically grab this and zoom out kind of get a preview of what the final product is going to be again twice as wide the same length and if I go twice as wide we're gonna have a leg here we're gonna have a leg where my hand is obviously a leg on that side a leg on that side and we have a solar panel that is off the ground so solar panels or solar cells apparently don't like heat. Uh, so basically the fact that the cells are freestanding and air can circulate through them, I'm hoping will uh, improve their performance. PLA doesn't survive well in the sun. So we're gonna stick this out in the sun and see how it lasts. Part of the idea of keeping everything tight together is to minimize the amount of this stuff that is actually exposed to the sun. You know, if it doesn't survive well, slapping a coat of white paint might be the first thing I do, but ultimately maybe switching plastics is gonna be required. So with that said, this is the overview of the hardware for the solar panels. This is how we got a solar panel. I'm gonna say a reasonable size. If we look at this in terms of how wide like a 300 watt home solar panel is, we're probably approaching that same width. And then we just scale up. So again, uh, the battery clip on the bottom. I'll jump back on the computer and show you guys that now. It's going to have three batteries on every single one of them and you just keep going. You want six batteries. You're obviously it has to be twice as wide as this but you just keep doubling up and keep doubling up and keep doubling up. The unfortunate consequence of kind of where we're going with all this is we're gonna have to pull the batteries out individually and kind of pop them in to all of our devices individually. The first goal is to build the battery pack to power the 3D printer. Uh, we've obviously got the pump that we want to electrify and do that. The pump, as I mentioned, is going to be used in a refrigerator. The refrigerator is going to be used in a CO2 scrubber. The other one as well is the pump. And then very soon we want to move to an electrolysis machine to separate uh, hydrogen and oxygen from water. And then we want to move to a sabatier machine, uh, which all of these things are going to require electricity. And as I don't know how much electricity is going to be used, we're just gonna keep everything like a kid's toy where you have to open up a little component and stick in batteries. So with that being said, I'm gonna fold this guy back up and we'll jump on to my computer to show you the CAD files of the solar charger, which fits in here. 
All right. So as we just finished talking about before, the overall purpose of the cell phone panel is to charge three batteries. And here we are in Tinkercad to basically show the CAD files, what I haven't printed already. So if we focus in on some of the more important things, just gonna hide a few things that are irrelevant, just go through the steps in terms of how I arrive at the final design. So the first thing I did is I took the actual Solar Manager C. So if we look at this device over here, on the actual web page, it gives us the dimensions. And here they are, 71 by 119 by 25. So the first thing I basically did, if we come back to Tinkercad, is I basically modeled that as a box. Obviously the box does has rounded corners. There's no fillets in Tinkercad. It's a reasonably well-known uh, limitations. This is kind of what the box looks like. Ignore the colors. And then very specifically, uh, in order for us to power plug in, we actually have to plug in uh, with this, uh, this jack. Uh, this DC jack which more or less plugs in right there and then what we have over on the right hand side over here is the actual box that is going to store this thing so how does this box work well the first thing we got to be able to do is get this thing inside the box which we are going to slide horizontally into the side this specific device over here you know you're going to slide it up and then that basically slides inside there um, but what I'll just do is hide it for now and then we're going to see that we're going to come in here and then as per the picture on the website what we're going to do is basically take the top panel off which will be on the bottom and then basically access the battery through this sliding slot which will slide in over this way so again if i hide this get access to the batteries in there and then basically these little ledges over here on this side and this side is what grabs onto the clips uh, and then very specifically, obviously the jack needs to come out. So this little guy over here slides out this direction over here. And once that is out, right, it's a free floating piece. Stick this in here, stick the jack in, put that back over top. And then you're going to have your two cables coming out that go up into the solar panel. So that explains this uh, thing over here in terms of printing. We're going to print it with this little slider piece here in place and that one there, but not this one because print orientation is going to become important. And if we bring it into Cura and look at what it looks like in terms of a slicer, we've got an infill there for the slot. And as we come down in terms of the printing, we're going to see the details of the way that this door fits in. So I've talked about the minimum dimensions before as being, uh, you know, 1.2 the minimum height, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. I'm exceeding or going beyond my minimum. This is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.8. But I don't think this, uh, this thing will take on too much strain. But overall, yeah. Here's your first tour of Tinkercad. So overall, I hope you enjoyed the video for the solar panel. Again, this is uh, part one when we actually get the physical components in, wire it in, and assemble it. There's no doubt going to be some changes required to this, some tweaking. But getting just the major components and getting, once again, version one out of the way is the purpose of this video. That being said, thanks for your attention, and we'll see you in the next one.